Thanks to everyone for tuning in to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel for another worship experience. The Lord has favored us again with life and opportunity to worship him virtually. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you will help us to recognize your holiness as you show to Israel that we can show your character in the way we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today we're talking about uh, the holy character of God, the holy character of God. Uh, our text is Romans chapter 7, verse 4 through 6. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It says, uh, likewise, my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has ra been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. Now, the purpose of this sermon is to show us the holy character of the eternal God of Israel. Holy means a moral or ethical wholeness or perfection, freedom from moral evil. Holiness is one of the essential elements of God's nature required of his people. Holiness may also be rendered as sanctification or godliness. The word, the, the word holy denotes that which is sanctified or set apart for divine service. That's where it all began. Abraham was called out from among his kindred or kinfolk, uh, and they were because they were idol makers. They were idol god makers. And how could Abraham learn to worship the true and living God when he was a part of a group of people who made idol gods that were silent or dead? They were like Christmas trees in essence that can't hear what you want or need and can't come to your house unless you go and purchase them and bring them home. They can't do anything to help you. But yet, Abraham's kinfolks were making them. Isaiah chapter 57 verse 1 says, The righteous perish, and no man layeth it to heart. The merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. God calls us out of a lot of evil. And a lot of times we look at, at it as God trying to cramp our style when he says, don't do this or do that. But really, he's trying to call us out from evil that is to come. God, through his word, is constantly trying to warn us of the evil that we are headed to. When the angels went to uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, they went to bring Lot and his family away from the destruction coming to that place. Godly character means that even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. Jesus started teaching with the Beatitudes. He was giving a new mindset, a new way of thinking. He is teaching us to think kingdom thoughts. The word beatitude originally meant simply blessedness, which is more than a statement, but what can be verified or attested to by others, someone more than ourselves. And we spend so much time running around talking about I'm blessed. When others should be able to say this is a blessed person. Why is that important? Because what we are should bless others. The lives, our attitude, our character should be a blessing to others. Now, happiness is based on what's happening in our lives or how we respond to what's happening. Happiness depends on the external. What's going on around us, what's happening to us from the outside. Somebody showing us love. Then that makes us happy. Someone showing us hatred, that makes us sad. Sad. It depends on, happiness depends on what's going on 
on the outside of us. But now I'm more inclined to need joy. Joy comes from God and comes from the inside or inward parts and is controlled uh, by what we are made of on the inside, what we're made of spiritually, our character. The psalmist gives an Old Testament view of what God considered blessed to look like. Psalms 32 and 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. That's blessed. Psalms 41 and 1 says, Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in times of trouble. Psalm 65 and 4 says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to reproach, to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy court. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. And Jesus pronounced a lot of blessings in uh, his first sermon. The Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 13, starting with verse 15, says, For this people, and, and I'll get to them short, shortly, this people have ears, uh, are, this people's hearts are wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their hearts, or should be converted, and I should heal them. It's not something you can do all by yourself. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and you your ears, for they hear. You're blessed when you got eyes that can see the presence of God working in your lives, can hear a word from God. You're blessed. Now, this this idea of having eyes and can't see or ears and can't hear is like having eyes and and, and can see an object off in the distance, but you can't quite make out what it is. Or hearing a sound, but can't tell if it's a car horn, somebody yelling, a tuba, a trumpet, or a saxophone, or what have you. You know there's a sound, but you can't quite make it out. And what this is saying actually is that the law and the prophets were pointing in the distance to Jesus. And when Jesus arrived in our midst and in our lives, he gave clarity to what the law and the prophets were trying to show us and say. When Jesus' disciples asked him why he spoke uh, so much in parables, he said to them, uh, understanding was given. Many acts like this, uh, many acts like they are all knowing but only the Lord knows everything. And unless he gives it to us, we'll be like having eyes and can't see, ears and can't hear, heart and can't understand. We'll be most miserable. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17 says, And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And you know the story of how uh, Jesus asked uh, uh, Peter, who do they say that I am? And he said, some say that you're uh, John the Baptist, some say that you're Elijah, you know. On. Then Jesus said, let's cut to, through the chase. Who do you say that I, the son of man, am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And that's when Jesus said, flesh and blood didn't tell you that. You didn't get that information from flesh and blood. But my Father in heaven revealed it to, to, unto you. In other words, to you it was given. 
finally the plural form became the common designation for the series of blessings beginning uh, both accounts of Jesus' great sermons. Matthew's uh, chapter 5, verse 3 through 21, and I'll read some of them and not all of them. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God, not peace breakers. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for, their, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad or happy. Rejoice for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And then he goes on to say, you are the salt of the earth. But you got to live in such a way that you can affect the change in other people's lives. Your life can be a blessing to other folks. And a lot, a lot of times we think that a blessing is what we can hand somebody. When so often blessing somebody is tied up in what we can show somebody, a better way of living. And he says, goes on to say, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill and cannot be hid. In other words, if you're going to be a light to somebody, you got to be shining in a way that will show them how to walk without getting into danger or hurting themselves. The, the psalmist says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So we must be walking by faith and not by sight. We must be walking in a way that shows people the character of God in us. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of those verses. Uh, you can read it when you get home, uh, get a chance rather. Now, first Peter chapter one, verse 16 says, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. And if ye call on the father who is without respect of person. That's that, that's an important way of being holy, not having respect of person, not esteeming one person above another. Not treating somebody else better than you do somebody else. That's a way of being holy. That's the way God is holy. God instructed Moses to consecrate Aaron and his son to the priesthood. Exodus 29 and 9. The children of Israel was admonished or, or, or warned to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Exodus 20 and 8. Elisha is called a man of God, a holy man of God in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 9. And Herod, King Herod, feared John the Baptist, knowing that he was a just and a holy man. Now, holy is sometimes used in a ceremonial sense. But the main use is to describe God's righteous character and his nature. Matthews chapter 12, verse 1 through 8 uh, says, At times Jesus went through the grain field on the Sabbath day. His disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful on, to do on the Sabbath day. And in other words, the Pharisees that were supposed to be 
exhibiting the moral character of God. And one of those important characters, moral character, is to judge not that ye be not judged. And here they are judging the Lord of the Sabbath. And God wants us to stop, to get out of the business of judging folks and try to show them the right way in love. And if you had known what this means, Jesus says to the Pharisees, that I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the Sabbath. God does not count holiness as keeping special rituals or observances. Holiness originates in God and in his nature. Holiness is a distinct quality of God's character. What we eat or don't eat does not make us holy. Individuals or, or, or religious groups that abstain from eating certain types of meat like pork are not holy, but ignorant. God's high expectations of his people flows out of his own holy nature. You shall be to me a, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Exodus chapter 19, verse 6. Sanctify yourself, therefore, and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 7. Jesus was the very personification of holiness. He reinforced God's demand for holiness by insisting that his disciples must have a higher quality of righteousness than that of the scribes and Pharisees. Matthew chapter 5, verse 20. Like the, like, like the prophets Amos and, and Hosea, Jesus appeals to, to, to his disciples to, 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 for more than just ceremonial. Holiness. He says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. That's what Hosea prophesied in chapter 6, verse 6. And then Matthews came along and reinforced it in Matthews chapter 12, verse 7. The theme of sanctification are the growing into the likeness of God and being consecrated for his use is an important thought throughout the Bible. Like Jesus, the apostles taught that sanctification or true holiness is expressed or expresses itself in patience and in loving service while awaiting the Lord's return. Peter urged the suffering Christians in the Roman Empire to follow God's example of holiness in their trials as he who has called you is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. And that's found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15. Paul's prayer for the saints of Thessalonica is timeless in its application to the church and individual believers. He prays, and may the Lord make you increase in love and abound in love so that he may establish your heart blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all saints. First Thessalonians uh, chapter 3 verse 12 and 13. Holiness is selfless acts of love. I'm referring to agape love that goes beyond mere attractions or brotherly affections. We need to have an exhibit of love. Instead of judging others, it should be self-giving. Love that shows mercy and gives unearned and undeserved grace. The law could never have seen or have given, rather, 
uh, us a love of uh, love or grace. Only Jesus could do that. And he did it on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He gave his life for sinners so that sinners could have life and have it more abundantly. He died. And you have to believe that he died for our sins. They did what was normal. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. And he was there for three days. But early the third day morning, after being in that tomb for three days, Jesus established a new norm. He rose from the dead and exited the borrowed tomb with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. Power to save to the uttermost. Agape love always gives more than is needed or required. the holy character of God is more about giving than taking. It's a love that gives, a character that is filled with love that, that gives instead of takes, lifts instead of pushes down, brings out instead of trying to shut off. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving the increase and in causing your word to come alive in us that through Jesus Christ we can have clarity and understanding and see what the Old Testament believers couldn't see or hear. Thank you for your Son and your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' all-knowing name we pray. Amen. Don't forget to wear your mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. And walk by faith and not by sight, and this too shall pass. May the God of all joy and peace be with you until we meet again. So long.